Hello and welcome back to Let's Try. We're trying the Dungeon of Nahelbeck. Uh, this game is a winner of the award, hardest name to say for a game. <laughs> really cool. It's a dungeon delving tactics game. I'm really uh, feeling an itch for tactics games and definitely this one is scratching it. It's not a roguelite or roguelike. It's actually a kind of linear progression um, tactics dungeon game, classic kind of campaign with a story. I also just want to throw this out there. I haven't really done much of this, but this game actually runs really well on the Steam Deck. The text will probably be pretty small, but uh, it, it's, it's very playable on the deck and it runs really nicely. So we are a rowdy gang of adventurers who have decided to brave the dungeon of Nehalbeck. The dungeon of Nehalbeck is not a standard dungeon and you might be able to tell we're in a tavern right now. This tavern is part of the dungeon so there's like maybe this interesting extra curiosity involving the story of the dungeon including uh, at one point a game show host goblin uh, that decided to curse them and and make our dwarf disappear. That's kind of where we're at the story in the storyline is we're looking for our dwarf Dwarf. That's their class, by the way. It's just dwarf. So let's go and find a combat. Maybe we can start talking about some of the mechanics. I love the look of the dungeon. They've really gone for something interesting here. It doesn't feel standard. I also really appreciate a game that entirely takes place in one zone, like one dungeon. I'm a huge fan of the dungeon of Undermountain, now known as the, the Mad King Wizard or something. Very classic kind of D&D &D dungeon. It's like one entire campaign. So what we could do is switch to our thief. Our thief uh, slow moves moving, but they will detect traps. There's a lot of, um, you could really consider this game kind of like D&D meets XCOM. All right, we've, we've sufficiently trapped we've this bowl. Oh, is that our dwarf? They got the ox that strikes back. Durandil. Do -do 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 -do. Hey, finders keepers. So I believe that is our dwarf, but they don't seem to be themselves. Oh yeah. Anyone calls me Snow White, they get a smack in the head. Lol. I don't know. The, the humor in this game plays a... It, it walks a fine line between a cringe and sensible chuckle. So we have a bunch of dwarves we're going to deal with. They're level two. We only have the one level two character, so this combat might be beyond us. Before we start combat, we have this kind of pre-combat setup where we can put a character somewhere. There is both positional and um, directional tactics in this game, meaning the direction of your character is going to matter if they're being attacked from behind or in front. And uh, sometimes you'll have characters that also have overwatch and they'll have th where they're facing is actually going to matter in terms of the, the overwatch we're going to set up our wizard over here so that she's behind cover cover is a thing our thief we can uh, we want to we actually want them to be pretty pretty up front we'll get a bonus i guess from our paladin our paladin is a fairly new member, but they're gonna offer a bit of extra protection for us. They're also level three, so maybe that'll make the difference. And we'll go ahead and start this combat. Randomia, the demoness has taken an interest in our group's fate. Thanks to her, you now have access to the random Randomia influence gauge. The unluckier your characters are, the more gauge fills up. As it fills up, the gauge will unlock four tiers, which can then be used to ask fate for a leg up during the turn of one of your characters. This is an interesting thing as like, as a character becomes unlucky, they, they get a kind of a random boon. So we do want to move our ranger up, but maybe instead we'll have them use one of their main abilities. They have the ability to give everyone a buff and I, I want to do like a charge. We can then move him forward. Uh, so I think I'll just like move him in front of cover and we'll have the paladin move up a bit. Wonder if she, she's, I haven't actually been able to use her yet. So I, I'm interested in what she's got. Paladin gains a huge bonus to her parry chance. Any melee attack she parries triggers a repost. That sounds amazing. Let's go ahead and do that. She's about to take a bunch of attack. Barbarian, he's actually kind of squishy, but he does dole out the damage. We're gonna see if we can't um, put an end to one of these dwarves right away. Oh, Steel Barrage is actually meant to attack multiple characters, so not as useful. So we're just gonna have him do a normal melee attack. You could have seen maybe the chance that he has to hit that character was at 60%. So we do have like actually pretty deep mechanics in terms of like a likelihood to hit something. We have cover tactics. We have moves that kind of push enemies back. Uh, we also have attacks of opportunity. So you can actually chain combo things together where we'll push an enemy back and then they also take an attack of opportunity. Um, so things like that. This game is actually very surprisingly deep. Its execution feels kind of like we're going for silly, charming and goofy bit. It feels like a intense game for what it for for how it displays. So here's our wizard S. Um, she's got 
a whirlwind she could do, but I, I actually think it would be better to just do like a normal ranged attack. Her ranged attack is just like a sling and a spell. She has a 50% chance to miss here or hit depending depending on how full your glass is, I suppose. And here's our thief. Our thief is pretty squishy. We want to make sure he's in a position to do a backstab off if he can. But right now he's just going to move up, give her a kind of a buff by by being close to her and we'll we'll leave him for now. Barbarian took a bunch of damage there. Not not good for business. Oh, Dorf went past the Paladin. Uh, she's flanked. She didn't get the repost. Here's our elf. The elf is our ranged unit. You can use the ranger with a, a bow, like everyone can use a bow, but she is, quotation marks, the one the one that doesn't suck with a bow. But I think she kind of sucks, to be honest. Because she's got this ricochet attack, which sounds really cool. Um, it's exactly what it sounds like. But the problem is, we'll hit enemies, but it'll also hit your friends. Probably just use a normal attack with her. She has an 81% chance to hit this guy, so let's see if we can't make miracles happen. Oh, you got a parry, apparently. Dwarf is gonna take a shot with a crossbow. Didn't even know. Ooh, but he actually missed missed the ranger and hit the elf instead. Okay, this dwarf has gone on defensive mode. This dwarf has gone on overwatch mode. We can see by hovering over them what that overwatch looks like. So if anyone moves inside this uh, red field, then he's gonna get a free shot off. He might not hit. We also have overwatch mode, by the way. So we could do something like this with our ranger which would actually be not a terrible idea so why don't we go ahead and set that up as well so now we have our paladin our paladin is definitely in danger let's see if maybe we can stun someone we can see uh who we're in range of and by doing an attack i don't think we're going to trigger that overwatch it's just by moving we're going to stun that lad you basically get one movement and one attack, or you can double move and that forgoes your action or your attack, just like in D&D, or at least D&D 3.5 or 5th edition. Barbarian is in a little bit of a danger, but we might be able, oh, he's, he's just barely not gonna be able to kill this guy. We could get lucky with a critical, but we didn't. And now we have another dude. They did a sprint, so that, that means they for, foregoed their attack. What we could do, well, it, actually our ogre isn't in a great position because no matter where or how they move, they're gonna take some damage. However, it might be a good idea to just take the damage. Oh, they missed. So apparently you can miss with the overwatch. This is this is their Kodula Opog. Um, that means that they're gonna smack this guy uh and and they're gonna get moved a couple of tiles but because they're in area of attack of the the thief they're in range of the thief um that means that the thief is gonna get a free uh attack of opportunity so let's see what that looks like he also gets a backstab off apparently it did not move the dude so uh, I guess that movement is not guaranteed. I, I really want to take this guy out because I don't want him to get another attack. So we can, if we hover over a position, we can see who she'll be in range of hitting. So we want to move her there. She'll still be in cover. In fact, she has high cover uh, here from this dwarf, so that's good. And then we're going to go ahead and smack this guy and hopefully that'll kill him. There we go. This is good. Thief is in quite a bit of problems here. Uh, he is an, unable to backstab either of these characters. Uh, and in fact, if he moves at all, he's gonna take an attack of opportunity from either of these. So he's just gonna do a, a basic attack. He will get a bonus from either the ogre or the paladin, doesn't matter who. So why don't we just go ahead and hit this guy. Thief is now, oh, okay. So he tried to move and uh, took an attack of opportunity from the paladin. He unfortunately was able to get a really good attack on the elf. That's her class, by the way, elf. Things are not going very well right now, I'll be honest. We're gonna wanna use our wizard to re recover our elf, but if we recover her before she passes out, then uh, she'll be able to do some more stuff, but she'll have an injury. You can see that little crossed heart means that uh, that she's she's got an injury, which we'll have to use another bandage on. So let's see, first blood naive, hopeful strength that does double damage on targets with full health. We could do that against this lad and we'll want to, but I uh, really would like to take this guy out if I can. Partial parry, so he he actually blocks some of that attack, which is no good. Paladin still not in the greatest position, but she can do quite a big chunk of damage to this guy. This guy's overwatched again, so we can't move. Let's see if we can't get a backstab with our barbarian. 
We did get a backstab. We did a nice chunk of damage. Unfortunately, that means we're not gonna... Oh, critical failure. I'm pretty sure they critical failed, so they did it to themselves by accident. So that's kind of nice. Punk. This is our ogre, by the way. That's their class, the ogre. And we, uh, we want to help our ranger, but yeah, our ranger, but we do want to help the elf get them back into the combat. So we're going to go ahead and use cure wounds spell that she can bring a characters back. She's still going to be injured, but now she's can, she can uh, do a bit more uh, before the combat's over. So Overwatch is still proving to be a huge problem. I'm wondering if it wouldn't be worth taking it for the team as the thief. Yeah, let's do that. Let's see it. Miss. Nice. We got, we're continuing to get lucky. All right. We'll get an attack off. Oh, critical failure. He almost killed himself. Let's see how the barbarian fares. Okay. He, he's, he's almost down for the count. We're definitely going to get through this, but it's going to be, going to be tough. Thief has a very high dodge value, so he has a good chance of dodging attacks. So does the elf, by the way. This is, yeah, that's, that's the barbarian down. Well, the elf is in a really bad position. She can't actually attack unless she's like one tile away from enemies. She's in area of attack on two different enemies. Don't think that's actually worth it. So I think we're going to pass on her turn for now and see if we can't eliminate some of these dangers as the uh, ranger. So there's one down. We are increasing our unluck here. What do you want to call it? Unexpected life support heals all injured and gives health points back to the target. We can use that. Let's do that. We go ahead and get a free heal action for the Barbarian. That actually puts them back on the turn order and they're gonna get a turn before that dwarf moves, which is great. Let's go ahead and assist our uh, thief. I'm here, just saying, people tend to forget me. Smack, there we go. Barbarian's gonna get that flank and the backstab. They did, just barely did not kill him. Oh no, he's got a whirlwind attack. Wizard S. Can we do some damage to him? We could, we could kill. Let's just kill this lad. That's the barbarian down again. That's okay, he got a free attack. Please don't down the elf again. Ooh, critical hit, the, the elf is down. Okay, let's take a shot on this guy. We have a 64% chance of hitting them. Nice, we got lucky. Let's see uh, what this Waza Whirlwind looks like. It works better when there's a lot of enemies, but it also hits your friends. It has a pretty hefty cooldown too for three turns. Let's take care of this guy. We'll get, we'll get our uh, thief's special ability off. Sneaky strike should kill them. 108% chance to hit. They dodged, are you kidding me? Can't, can't believe it. Well, we, we got lucky on the dodge there. We should be able to kill them with a bit of positioning here. Nope, that's not going to do it. And they only have 30%. They have that good cover. The good, good cover. Ranger, come on, dodge. Nope. Let's see if we can't get a hit off with a ranger. He's he's not hopeless with the bow. I stop making chairs for this? Never mind. This one dwarf has managed to evade everyone. <laughs> he dodged it. I cannot believe this guy right now. Now on the thief's next turn, if this guy is still somehow alive, I'm going to break through one of these barriers. It's gonna take two attacks to break through. Fine. No, he's still alive. Cannot believe him. There we go. He oh my god. I cannot believe what just happened there. Managed to do with some damage because I removed the box. You're so done. I I you're out of here, buddy. Apparently I finished a combat with a character at one HP. So what I can do now is I have some healing potions. I can use that to recover everyone to full HP. Well, I say full, but you can see they're all injured. And in fact, the elf and the barbarian are both very injured. So we're gonna have to use a couple of bandages. Wow, a lot of bandages to help them. And then we're also gonna have to heal, use a healing potion. I'm pretty sure that was a, that was a pretty costly combat. If you're looking for some tips, just come to me. I know everyone around here. Tips? The bartender gives clients tips here? Very good. The dialogue in this game is is both an asset and and maybe uh, I don't know, kind of a kind of a quirk. I appreciate the voice acting and I actually do appreciate how snappy the dialogue is. 
but some of the humor that just comes in, it feels like almost out of place in a weird way. Okay, so what we wanna do is now go to our inventory, see if we can't equip some people. Tattered cloth belt, go ahead and equip that. I think this is better. Uh, I don't think it's actually better. Chair canner tunic, protection and support. Definitely that's going to help. Bullseye ring offers precision. The elf, the bard, the wizard, and the ogre have all leveled up. So we're gonna wanna level them up. So let's do that real quick. We can also have a look at like the level of depth in terms of uh, your characters. You can just turn on a setting that lets them automatically level up so you don't have to get into the minutia of like well, which which stats do I upgrade. And I'm probably just gonna, you know, we'll, we'll, the, the agility and courage is the elves recommended, I would say. And then we'll pick um, a new skill. Magic kiss that heals an ally at range. Its power varies depending on the elves charisma. And we're gonna be picking an active and a passive skill. So I think I'm gonna go for the long shot. When the elf is adjacent to the dwarf, she gains plus five impact. So there's some interesting passive skills, not just with the elf, but with all of the characters, they kind of have a relationship with each other. For instance, the ranger has an ability that when he's, uh, or passive skill you can take that when he's near the thief, he gets a benefit. And it's actually not, not because he likes being near the thief, but because he actually hates the thief because of how cowardly he is. I'm gonna pick the her passive um, plus five precision with the bow because we are using the bow at all times. You can, by the way, I can hold the control button and click uh, to create waypoints in case there's, I, I wanna kind of avoid a character's direction. Like if I went right here and moved up, then he would get an attack of opportunity. But I wanna kind of like sidestep that a little bit. So I will say, you know, obviously critically failing in a game like this, you know, like, like XCOM feels bad, but I really appreciate this feature where it's like, yeah, bad things are happening, but you're 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 actually benefiting in a way. In fact, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and use this heal on the ranger. Bonk. I love. I actually really enjoy some of the animations in this game. There's a lot of movement to to everyone's you know wiggle. Okay, so he's going to attempt to retreat. We'll get less rewards if we if he uh, gets away. So we want to kill him before that happens. There it is. Chris. So that's going to do it for the Dungeon of Nahalbeck. Um, I really like this game. It's it's really charming. It's got a lot of depth to it. It's got, as I say, way more depth to it than you would expect for a game like this. And it's also got a lot of DLC, which I kind of wouldn't mind it dipping my, my hands in. It's like whole new campaigns or if it's just little mini side quests, if they're new stories. I have a funny feeling it's going to be like more stories and stuff. So. I wouldn't mind trying them out just to see what they what they have on offer. Definitely um, the humor is going to be hit or miss for some people, but I honestly recommend trying this game even if it's not a hit for you because it's still a really fun game. If you're any fan of uh, like D&D or dungeon delving games or even something like um, Divinity Original Sin, I feel like this game will really scratch an itch for you. All right, Dungeon of Nahalbeck. Have you tried it? Please let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy. Thank you.